Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Create a Quick Great Tone series for our Line 6 Helix. In this series, I try to condense some other videos I've done in the longer series, get to the point really fast, and talk about some of the features that can help you to get a better tone. Today I am talking about what I feel is one of the most important and useful blocks we have in the Line 6 Helix, and that is the Shelf EQ. So without further ado, let's go take a look and see what this does. So here we are over in Helix Native within Cubase. A lot of folks might ask, what is a shelf EQ? A shelf EQ uh, is different than some other EQ, such as a parametric EQ or graphic EQ, in that we pick a set frequency point and then we can boost or cut all the frequencies above or below that point, depending on if we're using a low shelf or a high shelf. At one point in time, the Helix did not have a shelf EQ. And I did a video where I talked about using a workaround method using a split crossover block, but then the folks at line six saw that and said, you know what, we need a shelf EQ in there. I'm really glad they put it in. So this shelf EQ is basically going to pick that point when we boost it, let's say, it raises all the frequencies it, and it kind of looks like a shelf. If here was your center point, it would take all the frequencies above and either boost or cut those or below that frequency and do the same. So why might this be such a useful tool? There are a lot of folks that I've spoken to who don't really understand how EQ works. And you explain it to them, but they're still uncertain of what frequency they should go to, what frequencies they should be boosting and cutting. And I find that a shelf EQ is a real kind of happy medium place where even somebody with very little knowledge about EQ or frequencies can still improve their tone very, very quickly. And it's one of the reasons why I include a shelf EQ in almost all of my presets. So let's come over here to Helix Native. And what I've done is I've put a little tiny hall reverb at the end, just so that we don't have such a dry uh, tone coming into Cubase. And I've picked one of my favorite amp models in the Helix, which is the Matchstick Channel 2. I've just left it at the settings that it comes up with stock. And I added a favorite cab of mine, which is a 212 Interstate with probably my all time favorite microphone choice, the 121 ribbon, about three inches back. And so that gives us this tone here. So not so bad. I mean, we could pull that up and go, that sounds pretty good. But what happens a lot of times is we get to a rehearsal or we're playing with a band and the preset that we thought sounded so good back in our bedroom or our home studio room doesn't maybe work and we need a little more cut or a little less cut or a little more oomph to the bottom end or a little less, right? So we want a really fast way of doing that. Well, enter the shelf EQ. And I'm just gonna put a mono shelf EQ, low and high shelf. So what we have here is a low frequency, a high frequency, a low gain and a high gain. So we're gonna set a frequency point and then we're gonna be able to boost or cut all the all of the frequencies above or below that point uh, for either the low or the high. So one of my favorite things to do is to set both of these, low frequency and high frequency, to 650 hertz. Now, this is not carved in stone, this is just a preference of mine. Some people like to set them at different frequencies. Maybe we want to control just the frequencies below 200. Well, we can do that, we can separate that out. But I find for a general rule of quick adjustment, this 650 hertz point is a very useful point. So if we take our, our preset here that we had, which was not really much work gone into it, it's just basically the tones that came out when I made some really quick settings. <laughs> We may find that that works for us when we first hear it, but maybe we get into a recording session and all of a sudden that's maybe a little muddy or a little boomy or it's it's eating up some sonic space of another instrument. So one thing we could do is I could when I'm listening to this I would like to maybe come below 650 hertz and I'm going to pull that back about 2 dB. Maybe I'll even go 3 dB down on that. Now 
Now, if I just simply rotate that on and off, you'll notice how it kind of just cleans up a little bit of the muddiness that maybe we didn't even know was there. I'll go back to just minus 2 dB on it. A very simple little change like that, and it's already kind of made the tone get to a point where it's probably going to sit a little better in a mix on a recording, and when we get to a rehearsal and get up to band volume, it might help it to not be so boomy and muddy, right? Now, what about the tom end? Well, I could come up to the tom end here and say, well... What if we want to add just a touch more clarity? We don't need huge moves on these. I'm going to add 1 dB to that. Versus with that off. So the tone that sounded really good before to me now actually has a little bit of mud to it and a little bit of bottom end that's maybe a little bit too tubby. Maybe not quite enough clarity on top. I simply make these little adjustments on the high and low shelf. If I switch to the neck pickup. Now, if I go on that neck pickup with this off. Notice how it's cleaned up that bottom a little bit. Maybe we'd want to go even more. Maybe we want that to go back to the minus three setting. Even here, just when I'm holding a chord. Right, we just add some nice clarity and clean up some of the things that maybe we don't want in a finished tone. Now, of course, we could also say, uh, you know, I don't want them to be at the same frequency. I'm just going to go down to, say, 400 here, and then maybe a 1,000 hertz here. Well, that's going to change the way this sounds also. But you'll hear it, it's a totally different experience there. But I really like the 650 hertz because cutting everything below the 650 really helps in that sort of 400 hertz range where things can get kind of muddy and it helps to control the low end. And everything above 650, there's some really nice stuff I like in a guitar tone up around 900 hertz or so. And it kind of boosts that while also balancing out maybe some of the harsher frequencies in the upper mids that we could, we could boost up above that. So I find that both of those set to 650 really helps and we can make little subtle tweaks to it and it really goes a long way to making our tone work in a mix, work at band volume, work in a live context, etc. <laughs> So there you have it, a very quick look at the low and high shelf EQ and a few ideas for you to maybe add to your presets to give you a quick way to tweak them even in a very subtle manner that might just give us that little bit of extra something that we were looking for to maybe perfect a preset. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of it and please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.